In the past the year and a bit, there's been four different reports come in or notices about rip cords. Um, the length of spectra rip cords, UPT have got six different ones. If Chemist Museum would probably tell me there's actually seven, not sure anything like that. Um, and one of the pictures here is uh, just from the Avalon safety notice of a couple of years ago saying there should be two inches of excess when you're pulling it around. But the picture on the left there is um, a rip cord that was found and that was its full stretch. So that was the wrong size in that rig. Um, that's it fully stretched out. So uh, it was a bit on the tight side. Uh, Firebird. That's a uh, safety notice that came out just at the end of 2018 um, about the swaging on that. And that's not the first time, first time with Firebird, but over the years we've seen that before. And frayed cables. Um, the cable on the left there, that wasn't how it was seen. That was how we, after we twiddled it around a bit, it ended up looking. Um, but it were broken fibres in it. And the, one on the right is from an atom. And it's not a very clear photo. Uh, but you've got just about make out a fibre on the eye, but also the area it's pointing at is where it normally rests on the metal handle, and there are broken fibres there. So basically, when we're doing repacks and everything else, do take the rip cords out. I know the soft ones can be a pain, so put a pull up in and put it back in and inspect the whole condition of them. RSLs, we've had four reports or things come in on RSLs over the year. Um, the SWS fire at the end of 2018 um, could hook on the little the, the clamp. Uh, the wings, there's a mod to the way that you tied on that bit. Um, sky hook where the thread wasn't on, so we're needing to make sure that the red bit's going to do its job. Otherwise, it ain't going to work as a sky hook. And the chuckle clamp that we've talked about, which has resulted in the longest safety information I think we've ever issued. Uh, those of you that have seen it, about tandem equipment. So, uh, things. Drogues, for those of you involved with tandems and tandem equipment, four reports on drogues from the correct attachment and the routing. And Fire have now come up with a slight mod to how you route the cables. Um, calibration, we've had problems with the wrong length as they've shrunk or stretched or whatever. Um, and generally the condition uh, where we've had them snapping. Um, or the condition of the pins. So again, these should be picked up on a 100 jump check, um, but that's not really a picture that you want to see after you've uh, pulled the ripcord and that's all that you've got left. Um, <coughs> yeah, okay. So, uh, form 281, sorry to keep going on about forms. Uh, it's the guidance notes on filling in, um, doing the 100 jump check, and that now includes some guidance on the life expectancy of various bits of components. So if you're not familiar with it, have a look at it and use it. Uh, been some reports on things being misrouted, um, whether it's basically a step through on the lines or a brake line going around the lines. Um, that's actually routed correctly, but uh, we have seen pictures where the, uh, the rings have been put on the wrong way around on various RSLs and likewise that part and again this has happened more than once where somebody's done something with the AAD and then put it back in over the top of the RSL if you can see that um, yeah. hopefully it would pull it out of the pocket but it's not going to help the deployment things coming off and we're not talking about helmets and uh, shoes which is there we're talking about toggles coming off the line was attached by a, a D-ring, um, which obviously wasn't a single piece, and it separated. So the uh, CF jumper was then able to steer because that D-ring was his toggle. So holding it with a finger and a thumb, he was able to steer. I don't think the flare was very good. Um, and the shackle one um, on, the, on the tandem. Uh, three reports or notices came out on AADs. Um, so two of them were to do with the maintenance. So the now slightly complicated maintenance schedule on Cyprus, uh, depending on the age of it. Um, 
vigil have two notices out, one of which is now out of date um, as of the 31st of December. Um, but they did ask me to remind you that there's another one coming up that has to be done by the end of May. Even if you aren't going to 21,000 feet, um, you were supposed to send them back for the firmware to be updated. And you need to just check um, which that is by turning on the unit and checking what firmware is in there. Um, and we had one incident where the mode on a changeable mode uh, was incorrectly set and somebody had a slow opening and then found their reserve coming out because they were jumping a standard sport rig but their multi-mode AAD was set on tandem. So it was activating somewhat higher than you expected. So what else have we kind of come across and discussed over the year? Um, sticky fabric reappeared on an Atom. Uh, it's not a new one, but we will get it coming back, or kit that's been sitting there for a while. Um, so things to be aware of. And connector links, and we were talking about soft links and various things, and I think that's going to be an ongoing subject. Um, and we have had instances of links not being fully tightened up um, and being found on inspection to be loose. Um, the bottom one is a tandem link, which is very slightly bent because it had come undone, and the other one's obviously much worse. Um, condition of soft links. How many of you have changed line sets, but then the person hasn't given you a new set of soft links to put on when you're doing the line set? Um, yeah, they made the lines, so why don't we just put a new set of connector links on? And the right connector links for the job. And then just going back a little bit again to the end of 2018, um, safety notice from Parachute Systems about using a soft link in your D-bag and don't because it can pull through. So uh, use a hard link in that position. But the most important thing with, with soft links is that you're using the right one for the job. So on a reserve, you use the connector links that are specified by the manufacturer. Slinks, PD slinks may have a TSO, but at the moment the ruling is that you use the slink, the connector links specified by the manufacturer of the reserve canopy. You can't just put slinks on anything just because you think they're okay. In fact, they may be better, but at the moment that's the ruling. And cutaway cables, um, cable length, obviously quite important. Interesting, different manufacturers have different ideas of how much the excess should be. It should be um, If you have an RSL, then obviously you don't want that side to release before the other one, or just the only one on its own. And uh, different manufacturers measure from either the point where the, the loop is or from the end of the housing. Um, so again, if you're measuring it, you do need to check that you're measuring it by the manufacturer's method. And there is a difference in that excess. Um, a very quick trawl showed that Avalon was only half an inch difference. Uh, Aerodyne is one inch, which is what the uh, rigging manual says. Um, UPT have a two inch difference between the lengths and some path because of they changing the RSL from one side to the other over the years, um, then look it up. So make sure you're measuring it by their method as well. But, uh, but you all understand that you do really want your RSL to be activating when the whole canopy's gone away and not before half of it's left. So there were just a few of the things that we uh, talked about at Riggers. Um, so I just draw your attention to a couple of those forms and. Um, any questions on that? And if I could have Tom and Ken come up this way and any examiners come up this way, and we'll move on into the open forum.